coffee. Like coffee? Yeah, try it. Check, check. I like fruity. Here, try one. Mine's more fruity. Hello, hello. There we go. All right, well, we're going to get the next broadcast going. If you could please give a warm welcome for Off the Rails with Tom and Mark. Well, I'll clap. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Hello, universe. Welcome to Off the Rails with Tom and Mark. Welcome back, Universe, to Off the Rails with Tom and Mark, episode 100, our first ever 100th episode. Coming to you live from the Wisconsin Podcast Festival here in b the beautiful Italian Community Center. All right, and today we have the Paranormal Investigators of Milwaukee with us. We got Michael Gravy and Noah Lee, silent I-G-H on that. <laughs> All right, so thank you for coming to the Wisconsin Podcast Festival. This is our 100th episode. We did cook the books for that a little bit. We're very excited to be here. Uh, we're going to talk about what's trending in fashion this week, the great American white claw shortage. <laughs> Facebook is ending likes, but adding dating, there is a wrong way to enter an art gallery. Uh, THC breathalyzer. Technology has destroyed patients. But first, as always, we like to do the hot seat. All right, are you guys ready for the hot seat? Am I in the hot seat? It doesn't matter. It's I was hot. sure there was a hot seat. It's happening. There's a hot plate? All right. Gravy, what do you feel about guys wearing skinny jeans? Uh, personally, I would never be able to fit in skinny jeans. <laughs> I could probably get it around my ankle. Um, not a big fan, though. No? All right. Go ahead. You, you want my opinion on yeah. skinny, skinny jeans? Skinny jeans, yeah. yeah. Smashing it. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's uh, uh, a look that's good for people. Okay, when's the appropriate time to stop telling your baby's age in months? <laughs> like week one? Uh, probably once you hit 18. 18 months? I have a kid. I'm going <laughs> to say two because clothes come in month sizes. Yeah. So once you hit the two T's, you're done. You don't need to say months. That's true. All right, let's follow up with that. And what do you think? the rules are for touching a pregnant belly? The, you know, <laughs> under no circumstances, according to my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you say, no, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be her idea. <laughs> I feel it kicking. No. Yeah, if they offer. If they offer? If they offer, it's okay. But It'd don't just go. not to. Right, right. Like, no, I don't want to touch that. That's gross. Is the thumbs up sign the universal end of a Facebook message? <laughs> You know, I personally hate the thumbs up. I think it's stupid. Well, when we're talking and somebody gives you a thumbs up, you know, you don't have to reply back. He responds with a middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> did is you that use even an to emoji? Yes, it is. I need that one. <laughs> All right. Did you used to raise the roof? And why don't people do it anymore? And will it make a comeback? My roof has always been on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I did raise the roof uh, many times. Uh, why it will come back? As with all things, it's cyclical. Okay. You notice how sweats and suits disappeared as soon as we brought up the ghost hunters? <laughs> 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 All right. As an adult, are there foods you eat that you don't like? Yeah, sure, vegetables. <laughs> you eat them now? <laughs> yeah, I eat them. Okay. Because it's good for your heart. You're supposed to. <laughs> yes, you're you know you don't to. have to anymore. Yeah, there's lots of things you're oh. supposed to do that you do because, you know, they're better for you. But If the kids are watching, you have to eat them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will try this. Yeah. Got to set an example. <laughs> yeah, I won't be able to eat my dessert until they eat their vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I make them watch me eat my dessert in front of their broccoli. <laughs> you eat vegetables? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, this question's for you. <laughs> Would it be fair for airlines to charge your ticket based on weight and fuel consumption? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Safety first. Another one for you. Is it okay to eat a slice of pizza out of the box before you get it home to everyone? <laughs> you got to make sure it's not poison, too. You don't want to bring that home to your family. Yeah. I actually, I lick every slice before I take it home to the family. 
All right, should a shirt be buttoned top to bottom or bottom to top? I do uh, top to bottom. Uh, easy questions here, please. Bottom to top. Gravy's I not good with hard. Do you ever start in the middle? I don't think I've ever put on a button shirt before. And you have to start from the beginning again. I hardly fit in my I shirts have done now. That before actually, and that's why I always go top to bottom now. <laughs> Get to the top, and like oh, I got to do this whole thing over again. Have those three trick buttons at the bottom on nice shirts. <laughs> yeah, you flip them over, you start buttoning them. You're like, oh, that's not right. That's not right at all. All right, are ghosts real? Are ghosts real? First, define what a ghost is. Oh boy. <laughs> Gravy, yes or no? Are ghosts real? I'm not sure yet. Still looking for that answer. All right. Well, He's a if believer. If you're looking to buy or sell a home or interested in a career in real estate, email Roy at Roy at CVHSR.com or give him a call, 414-235-0763. They'd love to be your go-to for all your real estate needs. That was a sponsor plug, by the way. Yeah, we got a couple of <laughs> hey, those. Hey, do you know if in the state of Wisconsin if we have to uh, Tell. declare if a house is haunted? All the real estate agents we had on are unsure of it. I know in New York, yes, you do. In Wisconsin, the rule is no. No, you don't. You don't have to d disclose well, that. Is there a legal definition of haunted? Uh, in the states in which you have to do it, there is, yes. Do you know offhand what those definitions are? Um, I don't. I don't. Oh. So in New York, I don't know what the rules are. But I just know it's not in Wisconsin because I recently okay. purchased a house and I looked into it. You Plus, asked if it was haunted? <laughs> uh, I didn't ask directly if it was haunted, but I didn't inquire if there were not haunted? deaths in the house. <laughs> are there known deaths in this house, yes or no? All right, Universe, let me tell you about the Off the Rails Comedy Night. It's going to be comedy and craft beer on October 12th from 8 to 10 at the Arts Mill in Grafton. We're doing a benefit for the North Shore Academy of the Arts. We have national and world traveling stand-up comedian James Irvin Berry, the teddy bear of comedy. We're also featuring Brendan O'Day with special guest Dana Ehrman. It's going to be comedy and craft beer, $20 general admission, $40 for VIP. That will get you a free drink, table seating, and a pizza party by John's Pizza. So let me just go over some of these sponsors here. We got Coldwell Banker, as always, is sponsoring. They're getting a table. They're helping us out. We got the 024 is putting it on with us. They're an original craft beer bar in Grafton. Digital Edge Copy helped print up our amazing posters that you're seeing on screen right now. Icy Cold for all your commercial refrigeration needs if you need something cold in a big way check that out we also have sahala ale works they have an oktoberfest going on at fall into grafton on october 5th you're going to get live polka dozens of wisconsin craft beer plenty of german food because if germany's known for one thing it's their food forget about those two little wars come to oktoberfest with sahala we're going to have their beer at our comedy night also sponsoring is the Firmatorium Brewery and Tasting Room. They have an event going on September 14th. It's Fermentoberfest. You can be part of Das Beer Run, a 0 .05 walk run. 0 .05K walk and run. They also have pretzel eating contests, a stein holding contest. Molly, how many steins can you hold? <laughs> She's not on right now. So, all right, thank you. Come check out. Go to our website. Go to our Facebook page, get some tickets. We keep the prices a little high to keep the hipsters out. All right, let's check out what's new in fa fashion. Have you guys heard of the asymmetrical jean fad that's coming on? I got a picture hmm. here. Uh, no. So the left leg is like a Jenko and the right leg is like a, like a normal It's like a bell jean. bottom. <laughs> yeah, describe that for you. I think it yeah. kind of looks like Maroon 5 stepped in a puddle of Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that looks like, Mac a off my pants. That looks like a serious important. factory mess up right there. I think it's probably yeah. what it was, and they're like, no, this is fashion. And okay. On the bright side, you hem that, you get some free fabric out of it. That's true. Is that like, like dull make bottom a good skinny jean? Jean coat sleeve. So <laughs> half of it is unacceptable for you. Yes. I couldn't fit in half A high of waist it. I'm not a huge fan on either, but whatever. All That's right. beyond the legs. Have you guys heard about the great American white claw shortage that's going on? I have. All I right. tried my first White Claw two days ago. How was it? And that's why now there's a uh, shortage. He loved it so store. much. <laughs> he bought out all your shelves. All your pick and saves are gone. So do they? Do they like drop the price to like a dollar? Uh, no, they pack. hired a bunch of people to work overtime. They're trying to get their stocks up to try to keep it in. Really? So was it like wine? Does it have to sit for six months or something? No. Think of Millennial Jesus came, and just turned your water into alcoholic seltzer water. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fun in that? <laughs> It has been everywhere. Every time I go to like a street festival, White Claw. 
Yeah, it was at the fair. Yeah. All right. Facebook is plotting to end likes. Have you guys heard that? No. Instagram did it. To get rid this of is going to huh? affect podcasters because you have to use likes as a metric. Hmm. Are they replacing it with something else? No, they're just hiding it. You'll be able to see how many likes, but other people can't look at your picture because it promotes depression. That Facebook promotes depression. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is the highlight reel of your life. Apparently. Oh, my life isn't very exciting. So that's why. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess I can, I can see the reasoning, but... Why are we supporting the minority of people when the majority of people in all the businesses kind of use that as a metric? Your people who sponsor, say, our podcast would want to know how many likes do you get on average. Are I like to join the bandwagon. I want to make sure it has lots of likes before I commit to liking it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Facebook is doing that, but they are also introducing Facebook dating. Didn't they already have a dating service? Nope, but in their commercial for the Facebook dating, they, they say, okay, this is how it's going to work, and by the way, we will not sell your information. <laughs> <laughs> Toad's promise. That's like a bartender handing you a drink and saying, I didn't spit in that. <laughs> Well, I wasn't thinking about it until you said anything. Right, exactly, exactly. I think my wife will kill me if I start using that dating app. <laughs> you have to be single to use it. You can't have a married status. Facebook won't let you. So you just create a second what about, status. What if it's complicated? A second Facebook yeah. profile. Second you, have, you have your married profile. They have your, your IP address linked. Maybe you can do 10 brother. Facebook profiles, but they'll know all of them. Oh, you yeah. can get banned on all of them. Just because you want to be on their dating? You think they'd want more people on their dating thing? <laughs> yeah. You think they'd auto sign you up without your permission? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I got a news anchor here that is suing Facebook because here's a picture of her. Her name's Karen Hepp. Uh, she's suing for $10 million because her picture appeared on dating websites and ED advertisements. Oh, okay. Here's Erectile a picture of her under MILF galleries. <laughs> and she did not give them permission. She's an attractive woman. Molly, would you be upset if you appeared on some Facebook MILF photos? Oh, not Ooh, getting it. Molly's mic is off. Why? That's a compliment. Ten million is pretty hefty for... Gotta start somewhere. Is there a DILF? <laughs> <laughs> Can I be on that page? <laughs> No, there is not a DILF. But, all right. Mark, this one's for you. Did you know they're Ooh. coming out with other Mark? Mark in the crowd. Oh. They're coming oh. out with a THC breathalyzer. Is that the final nail in the coffin to finally get weed legalized? Okay. How do you boys feel about THC? I I think in our current legislator situation, it's going to be a hard sell regardless of what they have. Uh, right now, they have to determine the driving to intoxicated ratio. Mm -hmm. And they say that it's right now it's not constant between people. Like Mark could take one hit and I could smoke all day, but we'll have the same ratio. Sure. Well, isn't More. alcohol kind of the same way? I mean, I've, I've drunk with guys who were three times my size and could drink a lot more than me. Okay. My old roommate. <laughs> the giant Native American. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Those were good times. <laughs> I mean, I hope it gets legalized. I, I mean, anything that might help it, but uh, I think that we're just missing out on an item that could be taxed. And once Illinois goes legal with it next year... We're going to be surrounded by weed. Yeah, pretty much. It's going to be nonstop arresting people at the border as they come back from Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. All right, we got, Mark gave me this one. Here is a art gallery that in order to enter, Mark, what do you got to do? You have to squeeze between two naked people who are basically blocking the door. <laughs> it's part of the uh, experience slash art installation. So there's yes. a naked man and I, a naked yeah. woman right here. Red Rover, Red Rover, please. In send a doorway. And you have to me to yourself up against them. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm <laughs> uncomfortable thinking about it. <laughs> to get Do in. they provide any sort of lubrication? 
Like one size does not fit all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, the, is the free beer on which side of them is the alcohol? Yeah, right. Wait, yeah. I can't see the picture. Is this a? It's exactly real what person? you're imagining. No, they're real people. They're real or people. Okay. And there in you the go. gallery's defense, they look like average people. They're not uh, like my safer crazy hot or crazy cool. big or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah, that's my problem so though. I'm not putting my butt on the guy's side. <laughs> but I'm I'm probably a little <laughs> thicker than average. That's and what I'm I saying. probably would really have to squeeze through. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, that's a small girl trying that's, to get through that's there. That's where the lube comes in. I'm telling you, you know. You don't want to get stuck between there. What are you going to do? There's a lot of chafing that goes on. What about when you see the shadow come up when you pass? <laughs> the shadow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't think about it. All right, we got uh, f- technology has forced people to uh, basically have zero patience anymore. Yeah, that's about right. Next story. Yeah? (laughs) (laughs) I got about 10 seconds of waiting on Molly to answer a question before I freak out on her. So 16 seconds before someone will freak out waiting for a web page to load. 25 seconds for a traffic light to change before you lose your shit. (laughs) I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch all the ads to support the creators. It's 30 seconds. You are a gentleman. It is a long 30 seconds. 30 seconds seems like a long time when you're actually sitting there with nothing else to do. I went to my parents' house to watch real cable television the <laughs> other day with actual commercial breaks. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I can't even watch a YouTube video until the commercial comes up, and then I swipe to the next one. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't, next I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. yeah, next video. Do you guys have stuff on YouTube? Yeah, we do have some things on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, we have a couple of videos. I don't know if there's any commercials. Yeah, we should no start doing commercials within our videos. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Sounds like a product. you buy White Claw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> what not to eat before investigation? This sounds a little like it says 28 seconds for a kettle to boil. People lose their shit. Doesn't it take longer for your kettle? No, to boil I have an electric it? kettle, man. It yeah. You are not living until you get an electric kettle. <laughs> what? But that's the problem, right? <laughs> they didn't use to can't be electric go kettle. You just had to wait for the water to boil. You had to chop down a tree <laughs> and get the wood. <laughs> go to the river and get the water. I mean, when I had to bake mac and cheese when I was a kid, like you're just this is a long time waiting for that water to boil to get that mac and cheese. <laughs> My wife loses her patience in about 30 seconds with me at night. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done yet? <laughs> there you go. Well, and there it is. There we go. <laughs> uh, how long do you think you should, how long would it take you to lose your shit after uh, looking for your luggage after a flight? 30 suitcases. Depends how long the flight. <laughs> <laughs> if you're waiting at the train, you're watching them come out. Oh, I hate that. The flight was very long. I just wanted to go home. It's probably shorter. 13 minutes. And yep. all customer complaints need to be filed and answered within two hours and 18 minutes exactly. For luggage? Time? <laughs> That's No, any complaint to any customer service. Oh. The response could just be, eh, eh. couldn't find it. All right, these stories suck. Let's get to some <laughs> paranormal investigating. All right, Noah Lee and Michael Gravy from PIMS. Let's go over your specialties in the group right here. Specialties? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I run the group. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Management. All right, here's the guy. I have a science background, and so uh, that's the type of investigating that we do. I direct everybody when I'm there, and uh, Gravy... Um, He's like a pack mule. Uh, <laughs> he also sure is good at um, opening taping, jars. taping plastic. <laughs> opening jars. <laughs> uh, you can lift stuff also. That's right. <laughs> you can hit him right in the face. He doesn't even flinch. <laughs> Here, watch. <laughs> you even lift, bro? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, that's what I do. All right. You guys don't like the term ghost hunters? No. Not particularly. Okay. Why? Because we're paranormal investigators. There's a, there's a slight difference. It seems more like uh, casual, I guess you'd say. And so to, to us, and it, it simply is probably just a, a personal preference thing. But, you know, I was like, I thought paranormal investigations sound more legitimate than someone who does ghost hunting. Do you think the TV show Ghost Hunters has hurt your field? I think it's a combination, definitely. I think uh, the TV show opened up a lot of possibilities because people saw it was more acceptable to talk about. And so when that happened, then people would contact us more frequently, or if we contacted a business that had some claims, they might be more apt to let us come in and do an investigation. Um, but yeah, there's the other side of the, sh- the sword there, which is everyone used it as like a how-to video of how to do parallel investigation. So then okay. like, there's a huge explosion in groups. So it's like butt sets. It hurts and feels good. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. The gravy so, always refers to it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most experienced. So how did you guys give it like a training regiment for new people? What's your process for inducting <coughs> and training the new generation? After they get past the hazing. <laughs> you sh- basically show them through uh, a demonstration on how to become investigators just as good as Noah and I are. Okay. Yeah, it's going through equipment, going through techniques, um, trying to dispel a lot of the misconceptions that people have coming what are, in. What are some of those misconceptions? Every place you go is, is going to have some something happen. That's the biggest one. You go on an investigation, oh, something's going to happen. What's no. your batting average? What's <laughs> <laughs> one in a hundred? It's too low. <laughs> <laughs> it's way lower than one in a hundred. <laughs> it's like one in probably 1,500, okay. I'd probably say. It's very low. Wow. That, okay. Mm, um, as far as something happening that when you're there, you're like, oh, something happened. Okay. Versus like maybe afterwards finding something on evidence. So how okay. do people get, uh, what are the steps to get PIMS to say come to your house? Uh, contact us. Most often people fill out our, we have a, a little contact us form on our website and they can fill it out and say, kind of describe what's going on. Um, and then we will contact them back and kind of do a phone interview with them. And then after the phone interview, if that goes well, if we don't figure out that something, maybe we can figure out what's going on without doing investigation. Uh, then we you do mean red flags like we probably shouldn't have to come because... Like they keep giggling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or they keep referring to, the second I'm going to take a hit. Or, ah, <laughs> 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 oh, damn it, I'm out of beer again. So that sort of stuff um, is red flags because obviously if we can't rely on someone's psychological mindset, t- we can't really take what they're saying at face so value. So the first thing you do when you get the house is say, I have to use your bathroom, and then you look through their medicine cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't do that. <laughs> we go through their garbage. We no. don't do that at all. Yeah. If you see 45 different bottles of pills, you may uh, call it an early night. Either that or we walk in and there's an entire DVD rack full of uh, Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunter episodes. Okay. That usually that's that's also red usually a red flag. Because yeah. they're like, oh, I, watched, I saw this in that one episode and this was happening in my house. Okay. <laughs> so other pre-investigation things you do before you get there, any history on a property or do you actually like Google the person? We do do a CCAP okay. on, the, on the person just to make sure. Because safety that you're first. you're not going to get killed. Safety right. first, right? Uh, we also will do, based on hi- like their claims, if they say, oh, such and such thing happened in this time frame, we do try to try to back that up historically if we can. But it is very infrequent that we can kind of find evidence that this actually occurred. Um, after the phone call, we do a, a site visit, basically, and then after the site visit is when we actually set up an investigation. So those are the three steps before we actually, sh- or, you know, two steps before you show up to your house uh, or, or business to do an investigation on. But then we'll do the historical, we'll do uh, the interviews. So if there's been multiple people that have had experiences happen, then we will try to get in touch with each one of those so we can get first-person interviews from them instead of just like, well, I, my friend was here and this is what he said happened or... Uh, my grandma was visiting, and this is what she said happened sort of situation because it's always better for us because uh, a lot of times people get details hooked up. Why does everybody turn the lights off in all those shows to do these investigations? Yeah, Ambiance mainly. No. <laughs> <laughs> to make it look... <laughs> really, um, we follow the standard whenever possible to investigate when the claims of activity occurred. So nine times out of ten, the claims are happening at night. And uh, as such, we try to replicate the situation as closely as possible. The other thing is, this is not our job. Uh, This is a hobby. (laughs) And so we often cannot investigate not after hours, if you will. So not on a weekend. The new and hauntings. Yeah, those are difficult (laughs) for us. But often you'll find, if you look at claims, there aren't many noon hauntings out there. (laughs) They're usually 3 in the morning or, you know, 8 o'clock at night when people are getting ready to go to bed or whatever. You think it's just because it's a quieter time and they notice things? Exactly. That's definitely one um, definitive possibility is that it's just quieter out. People are in bed, going to bed. There's less traffic. You know, things are just quieter. And so you notice other noises at your house makes all the time, but it's just too noisy to understand or see otherwise. So you guys, do you use the scientific method when you do these experiments? Uh, we do as much as possible. I mean... Um, well, what are some of your experiments? Let's start there. So we do have uh, these control recorders that each one of our investigators wear, and they control our noises that we make. Um, 
oftentimes our stomachs make a lot of noise, but basically after we eat Taco Bell, it's grumbling and they can sound like demons. It's delicious. You know, yeah. <laughs> it is 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> right, yeah, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, so we wear control recorders, and so that way, and we timestamp them too. Everything's timestamped to an atomic watch. So if, if something does occur at 3.32 and 59 seconds, everybody can check their control recorders to make sure that wasn't, wasn't them. And we've had cases where we've had um, somebody sneeze like in the basement of a building and by the time that sound travels up upstairs to the third floor, it sounds completely different. And so if, you know, if we're listening to the recorder on the third floor, we think we've got something paranormal because it sounds so weird. But then when we check our control recorders, someone says, oh, that was me, I sneezed. It sounded exactly like an old band saying, ugh. And that's, it, it's a, like on the first floor, that's what we thought it was. And then when we checked it, we were like, oh no, that was just somebody sneezing. And the problem is, when people are sneezing, everyone around them knows it was a sneeze. And so you're asking, well, did you make a weird noise? No, I didn't make a weird noise. I mean, I sneezed, but everyone knew that was a sneeze. I didn't have to tag that. So it's just how sound travels through a building, which when you're first time in a location might be on that investigation. So you don't know how sound is gonna travel through that building until you're there for that time. So having those extra control recorders and other recorders that we have out stationary are really critical to try to make sure we're not just putting out there something as evidence, which is just clearly uh, misinterpreted. How much of these EVP recordings is suggestion on the shows that show it like they, s they write the word while it's being played? 100%. One, okay. So you guys don't subscribe to EVPs at all? The <laughs> electronic voice phenomena? It's not that we don't subscribe to them, but the way to do it is you play it and let someone else try to figure out what they think it says. Because if you just put the words out there, it's just like the, the example I always use is when you mislearn the lyrics to a song and then you figure out later what the actual lyrics are, it's nearly impossible to get them right. Okay. And so when you put the words up there on the screen, people can be like, oh yeah, that tempo, that verbiage will fit in what I'm hearing. And so that's what they'll hear. Um, very often, if you just let them listen to it without giving them any sort mm -hmm. of context, uh, they'll come up with other things. And we do this all the time on the um, presentations we do library presentations when we play audio that we've captured and we don't tell them what it says until we've played it a number of times to see if other people can kind of pull it out okay so why can you hear these on like not live but on a recording how does that science work oh you're gonna make me answer this <laughs> yes we have no idea <laughs> we're still trying to figure that out I mean we're not sure how uh, it's it's manipulating the recorder to record a voice that we don't hear at the time. Um, you know, if we did hear at the vo at the time, it would be a disembodied voice, which I think has only happened twice to me. The rest have been electronic voice phenomenon where it's recorded and then we don't hear it until after go we go back and review it. And we're not sure how it's manipulating that recorder to record the voice. That's what's paranormal about it. What Does it ever show up on two separate devices? Occasionally we do have stuff, but it's it's usually more faint on one or the other, so we usually present the one that's the loudest, the more clear one. Did it ever show up on video? The, the voice, audio, the on audio a video recording. Um, none that I've ever experienced. It's the audio on the on the recorders are pretty crap compared to the the okay. audios that we the recorders that we use. We use a Zoom H1, so it records in a wave format, which is what we record in. Unlike other groups, they might record in an MP3 because they want to get more time out of it. But it's choppy. It's really it's it's more terrible. compressed. Yes, more compressed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What are the main types of hauntings you deal with? I know there's different kinds. Yeah, I mean, um, the uh, categories? Is category there are one? categories. Isn't there like Two. residual and intelligent and yeah. so poltergeist or something? Yeah, pol I mean, Gravy's really our resident poltergeist expert. but um, <laughs> Yeah, he's making fun of me because I had a <laughs> backstory on that. He's been making fun of me for years, but I had to give a talk at a library or at an event at the museum, and I was muffing up on the, on the poltergeist talk, and... I kept going back for my water because I was, it was, I was tired and I couldn't think of the words to say. So I'm like, oh, where's my water? And the whole time I'm holding it in my hand. <laughs> and so he's making fun of me and he's thinking, should I go and get him off the stage? Because he's making a fool out of himself. Yeah, Luckily, they're all little hook. kids. So I'm like, shut up, little <laughs> kids. Beer? Yeah. Gravy, go carry some equipment. Now yeah, that's pretty much what he did after that. Like, yeah, you're Just never talking to that again. rock over there and then put it back. Go check for yourself out. <laughs> so yeah, whenever Poltergeist comes up, he makes me look like I'm the expert. I'm no expert on that. So yeah, haunt, uh, intelligent and residual are kind of the main two. The other ones that people will come across is like inhuman and then poltergeist. The poltergeist stuff is real popular in the media um, because it, it'd be this a is fan pretty good movie. Yeah, and <laughs> book and other things. And uh, it would be fantastic to investigate a real poltergeist case. 
because the claims are exactly what you want to do. Like if you want to capture stuff on video and audio, Poltergeist cases would be perfect for that. But um, through research from the claims that are out there for cases, historical ones, um, they're all faked basically by the people that are involved in the case. And so uh, we really are looking at intelligent or residual. So things that we think are interacting with people or things that are just energy that's just somehow being released is really what we're focusing on. And we've had a few cases over the years, too, where it would seem like it was poltergeist activity, but when we get there and we see, we, s we felt that there was a different motive, like maybe a money motive in there or, or attention-seeking, you know, stuff okay. like that. So if you have been punked or so whatever So people you try say. to dupe us into thinking that they can get their story nationally and make money, you know, uh, make money off of it or something like that. So yeah, we never really figured it out. I mean, it was crazy activity, like eggs smashing against walls, supposedly, that were just materializing out of nowhere like coins materializing out of the walls and like bouncing down the hallway. But we'd, we'd left cameras there eggs. for like days at a time. And anytime something would happen, it'd always originate off camera and then come in camera. And it was never when there was no one there at all. So we just had to assume that when you record for Somebody's a week straight, an egg. someone's just doing it, right? Off, off camera. Like, yeah, it's the assumption, right? That's the simplest explanation. You guys have body cams or do you do handheld? Uh, most of our stuff is stationary cameras on tripods. We don't do the DVR system. No finding Bigfoot camera facing your face so we can <laughs> see your reaction. No. We, are, we are looking into, because cam like, uh, GoPro cameras have gotten cheaper over the years, and they have ones that are modified to be infrared um, sensitive, s to add that to our kind of repertoire. Because we all wear a control recorder, and we all wear a control data logger, which data logs humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure. And so we kind of want to, we've been toying with the idea of adding a, a control camera to that so that when, because oftentimes we'll be walking somewhere in between locations and investigations. Some of these locations are absolutely massive. So you can, there's no way you can cover the entire thing. So by having a camera on each one of us, maybe we'd be able to, if, if something happens or we think something happened, we'd have something to refer to. And it certainly would have helped a lot if we would have had that in place when like the most interesting thing that happened on our investigation had occurred. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about these trigger objects. Is that kind of like getting uh, a Marty McFly ghost and calling it chicken? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be more of a provoking, which is something I like to do occasionally. Okay. Um, of course you do, Gravy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> anything that'll get me pushed down the stairs or levitating or get my head spinning, you know, anything like that, I'm, I'm Has that happened for. yet? I wish. Oh, I right. pushed him down the stairs. But yeah. <laughs> he Who's deserved a ghost? it. <laughs> uh, but trigger objects are things we put out... Uh, in hopes to uh, elicit a response or items that might be related to the location or related to the claim of activity. Um, so it could be anything like booze or cigarettes, uh, children's toys, baseballs, things that whatever might be there might be familiar with and might want to play with or interact with. So we might gear our questions towards those items and see if we can get a response. Okay. All right. Uh, you recently uh, did a show. Can you talk about that at all? Your your most recent one that you had on your Facebook page? Yeah, we did a show. <laughs> For the tr can you <laughs> tell anything about it? You filmed a... It, it was a concept show um, that we... Uh, Allison Jornlin actually was through her connection that we were able to get an opportunity to participate in. Um, I can tell you that we shot at the Riverside Theater. Okay. Uh, that was a, several weeks ago at this point. Uh, we haven't heard anything back at, uh, from the production company about... And it, it wasn't centered on us. It was centered on someone else, another uh, female investigator, and we were kind of supporting that, um, that role that uh, was the concept for the show. So that's all we can share about it, just because the concept is unique uh, that they were doing. And so if we hear something back positive uh, or that we can talk about it more, I'd love to do so in the future. What are some other famous places you've investigated? Uh, beside the Riverside, you mean? Yeah. Uh, we've done uh, the Milwaukee Public Museum. We've done the Milwaukee Public Library. Uh, we've done um, what's now Epico's Church, was the Paradise Theater on Six Points in West Dallas. Um, Didn't you just go to Indiana? And, uh, yes, so I was just, that was going local first. Oh, okay, we're spreading <laughs> out. Like so we've plague. done Edinburgh Manor, we've done uh, Post Town Elementary, Far Schoolhouse, uh, Waverly Hills Sanitarium, Sanatorium, uh, Mansfield Reformatory, uh, we've done Sedensville Rectory, Bobby Mackey's Music World. Uh, we've done uh, Eastern State Penitentiary. We've done Penhurst Asylum, uh, Whispers Estate, uh, Vlaska S. Murder House. Uh, what else? Uh, Lincoln County, Lake County, both, oh, both yeah. are jails. Yeah, that's the one. Um, this, this summer recently we did those two. Hales Bar Dam. 
Do we have to do like a non-disclosure or something? Like if you do find anything, you're not allowed to talk about it or anything like that? Uh, only at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Okay. Well, that makes sense. If you did find something, say at one of the Pennhurst or whatever, what would you do with it? Yeah, so what's the next video, step? We would keep it a do? secret from the rest of the world. Because <laughs> that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there a central hub or what do you do with that information? Where does it go once you get it? Unfortunately, there's not a central hub. I know there's been some efforts in the past to try to create that, but the issue with the field is that there's no agreement. I mean, people do this in their free time. There's not people who are really getting paid to do this. And so to try to get people to agree upon a set of rules or standards to how to conduct an investigation, what equipment to use, you know, what's considered evidence and what's not considered evidence, it's very out, you know, each group has kind of their different things that they like to do. So. When we get something that we think is, uh, if we got something that was significant, we thought was significant, you know, we would definitely want to try to um, let other people look at it and get their opinion about it. You know, experts in other fields to see if they could come up with an explanation that maybe we didn't think of because we don't know everything. Um, and obviously get it as in front of as many eyes or listened by as many ears as possible so that we could um, get more info input about that. And then obviously have it out there for the public to view or listen to as well. Are orbs bogus? Define an orb. And orb define bogus. A shiny <laughs> artifact in a photograph. <laughs> they're real. Or they're definitely shiny objects in photographs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are they... Spiritual? Are they spiritual? No. No. They're uh, lens flares, bugs, dust, um, water vapor, their hair, their camera straps. They're many, many things, but they're not... Spiritual. I'm gonna give you a trigger word. Psychic. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do this again. I gotta <laughs> hold them back. <laughs> Actually, I just got done reading a really good book called Psychic Blues by Mark Edward, um, and it was a fantastic book. He was a um, started out as a magician, <laughs> turned mentalist, turned psychic, and uh, he basically followed. It, he basically wrote about his life being a psychic and how he duped people into believing that he had these abilities and the things that he did, cold readings, hot readings, uh, pre-show setup, all this stuff. And it was a fantastic book. I really enjoyed reading it. When I got done reading it, I actually found a pair, uh, a set of tarot cards at Goodwill, so I bought it because I want to like look through them and be like, oh, I wonder if I could do this. You know, and show people like what can be done and how how easily faked out people can believe on a, be on a psychic. So, What if the person truly believes they're a psychic? And that's, there's definitely cases of that. You know, it... it um, Gravy is referring to people who are n knowingly deceiving people. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people. Con peop artists. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're saying. John Edwards. John Edwards, <laughs> you know, uh, Sylvia Brown, you know, people like that who made a lot, a lot of money off of other people's grief, essentially. I think my mom called Sylvia Brown. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mom went and saw Sylvia Brown and she just saw John Edwards, despite my. Wait, he's still doing it? I thought he was busted like a decade ago. Oh, he, but he still does shows. People, they're sold out. Sold out shows. I thought he was totally taken down. You love him or you hate him, I guess. Well, Peop he's admitted people to will ignore lying. It. They'll ignore it. Well, it's not lying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was before. That was before. <laughs> but there are people who are like really think they have this ability, and they think that they're you know they're tapping into some um, kind of energy or information stream that only they can you know be privy to. And Do in you those think that's possible. Anything's possible, okay. right? With the right evidence to back it up. And so for in those instances when people are obviously just kind of either guessing or um, using information that was provided before and then presenting it as new, even, they may have actually forgotten that they knew that. There's a lot of things that we don't under, that realize that are in our, in our subconscious that we think, oh man, I never heard, I never read that, I never saw that, but actually you did. Like you can go back and show them a video of them getting that information and then, oh yeah, I guess I did know that. So I think there are honest mistakes out there that people are, are believing that they have this ability. But I said, I'm always open if anyone wants to say, oh yeah, I think I'm psychic. Well, there's things that, we, there's scientific ways that you can test that. Isn't and there a, a million dollar prize if you can prove you're psychic? From that actually does not exist anymore. No, but yes, James it's Randy. Still it's still, no, last it's I heard it didn't. It still exists. Okay, well. We'll yeah, it does. <laughs> yes, there is one. There is one. And uh, it's me. never been claimed. It's never been claimed. Is he just a tough judge? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very you know rigorous method you have to go through to be able to prove to get a million dollars, as it should be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, you guys are getting uh, pretty busy here in the fall. What do you got coming up? 
uh, what don't we have coming up? Let's see. We have public events at the Edinburgh Manor on October, or October 12th, uh, and we have another one at the Brumner Mansion on November 8th and 9th. Brumner's uh, right here in Milwaukee on yeah. Wisconsin Avenue. Yeah, it's very popular. It always, always sells out. Uh, so that, uh, those are opportunities for people to purchase tickets. It uh, helps fund our website, helps fund our you know, insurance that we hold, and all that sort of stuff, as well as it, obviously half the money goes to the venue that we're at as well. Uh, but they get to come and we set up all of our equipment. We do an investigation just like we, if it was only us there. And they can kind of tag along basically and experience the investigation that we do. How yeah. long does an investigation take? Uh, an investigation, an average investigation is six to eight hours. But for a public event, it's, uh, two sh we usually do two shifts. So at Edinburgh, it's two three-hour shifts. Uh, and in, uh, at uh, Brumder, it's two two-hour shifts. So usually that's enough for people. Well, what do you <laughs> got coming up next weekend? Next weekend, oh yeah, oh I don't know, a little thing called the Milwaukee Paranormal Conference. Excellent. And so uh, I'll be there. I'm giving a talk entitled uh, "Common Paranormal Misconceptions," and uh, it's the most hated talk there. <laughs> no, there's another guy, Dave Schumacher, is going to be. He's probably going to give one that people hate more. But uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to. Uh, there's, I think, there's some UFO people there, some cryptozoology people there as well. Lots of vendors. It's going to be Alverno College. Um, it's on the 14th. Uh, I think it starts at 9 o'clock and goes until 5. And it's run by T. Krulos, a yeah. au local author that uh, wrote Monster Hunters. He has um, been on the show. Oh, yeah, twice. Twice, twice yeah. yeah. Yeah, he wrote a book partially about us. Yep, Monster <laughs> Hunters, correct. Yep, Half My Face is on the cover, too. <laughs> right here. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, guys, for coming on. Uh, I know you love Off the Rails with Tom and Mark. Did you know you can actually get paid just for listening to this podcast? I know it sounds insane, but it's true. We just discovered this free new app called PodCoin. It literally pays you to listen to podcasts. Here's how it works. You listen to podcasts and you're PodCoin while you listen. Then you turn that PodCoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon or Starbucks. Or if you're a good person, you could even donate that PodCoin to charity. The more you listen, the more you earn. You want to know how to do it, Mark? you got to get better at these reads. You sound so canned. <coughs> <laughs> So here's what you do. <laughs> Download the app right now. They gave me a piece of paper. <laughs> she just put two hands up. I'm guessing that's 10 minutes. I'm wrapping it up. <laughs> Wrap it up faster. I'm ten. taking my condom off, and she's like, oh, you got one more minute? And <laughs> I'm done, baby. <laughs> so here's what you do. Molly, you're going to have to edit that. Uh, we have to send this read in. <laughs> So here's what you do. You download the app right now on your iPhone or Android. And I have a special code for you. Simply use our code RAILSTM and you get 300 PodCoin just for signing up. And if you listen to enough of us on there, you can get a cappuccino at Starbucks and Amazon gift card on us. So go ahead, listen to this podcast, virtually any podcast, on PodCoin and sign up with the code RAILSTM. All right, just like the Japanese story last week, Texas is cracking down on dick pics. Unsolicited nudes is now a $500 misdemeanor if the person receiving it does not give consent. Sounds fair. <laughs> how, how overwhelmed is dispatch going to be? <laughs> <laughs> dispatch, please hold. Dispatch, please hold. Dispatch, please hold. <laughs> May get all these calls for them. Uh, Catholic school in Nashville banned Harry Potter books for containing real curses and spells that can conjure evil spirits. It's not true. Well, the spells true. aren't true, or it's not happening. No, no they, that's banned. No, it's not, no I know it's true. banned, but there's real curses. Well, it defined, who, who determines it's define real? Define curse. <laughs> if we're gonna go like with the ancient Roman sense, it's just telling a deity what to do. It's like I curse you, have Apollo, you know, give you a flat tire on the way home. <laughs> don't and say that, man. Yeah. We don't have AAA. Like we could boss the Roman gods around. We can't do that anymore. <laughs> Mark, we got an update on the Army men story. We now have little Army women, green women, coming this week, so they updated cool. that. And let's end with uh, Krispy Kreme is debuting its pumpkin spice filled donut with that pumpkin mm. spice cream cheese. That means it's fall already, yeah, huh? Yeah, let the spice flow. Yeah. I had pumpkin spice this morning in my coffee. <laughs> so, all right, Mark, where can they find us? You don't have your clipboard. I don't have my clipboard. You can find us on the internet. The key phrase is off the rails TM. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, a bunch of places. Uh, email us at 
off the rails tm at gmail.com all right. Sounds so We're easy. good. All right, Pims, where can we find you guys? Uh, we are on Facebook, Paranormal Investigators of Milwaukee. We're also on YouTube, Paranormal Investigators of Milwaukee. And our website is paranormalmilwaukee.com. All right. And thank you very much, Universe. Remember, we're not good enough. Thanks for tuning in, Universe.